How you doing? Glad to have you with us today. Friday, rapid fire day on IB Nation Sports Talk. Full house once again. I don't know how I just swapped there all of a sudden, but Jesse I liked and I it because you're the foundation. Places. You got to hold. You got to. You got to prop <laughs> holding, us up. Holding the thing up. Yeah. <laughs> you got to hold us up, man. There you go. Vince is in. Is it Cincinnati? I'm in Cincinnati. Yeah. Yep. Cincinnati. Jesse, of course. In Cleveland, so you're both in uh, in Ohio today. Oof. Oof. Is it just Buckeye State? Like, do people in Ohio say Buckeye State, Jesse? What? How, how do they refer to it? Yeah, the Buckeye State. Okay. I mean, it, it really depends on where you're at. Up here, not so much. Like, in the heart of Columbus, yeah. Down oh, yeah, in Cincinnati, probably not as much again. But Yeah, yeah. Up where you are, like, do they just say the land? Is that kind of how it yeah, goes? Yeah, the land. Yeah, you're in the land. Uh, okay. <laughs> just weird. I we're obviously well, I'm over in Cincinnati, so I'm just over the state line. You know, it. I don't know. I haven't run into like any Ohio State people, which is probably good. Um, for Vince be up for a rumble if it happens. I, I'm happy that that's not the case. Um, and of course, we're playing teams from like other states. So like, played Kentucky today. We're gonna play Michigan tomorrow, and then we play South Dakota on Sunday. Ooh, okay. So it's like all the state champions are playing against each other or whatever, but um so I don't not running into a whole lot of Ohio people unless I'm like out of restaurants and whatnot. And I mean a lot of Cincinnati obviously, Xavier, Miami of Ohio, we've been doing some college tours as well. Um uh, so we've been looking at campuses and things like that. So no Ohio State people, which I can handle Miami of Ohio people, I can handle Xavier people, I can handle University of Cincinnati people. I can't handle Ohio State people. I just can't. It's fair. It's a very fair yeah. comment. Very fair statement. John's in Montana. Welcome, John. Might be the first Montanan that uh, we've had. Big Sky Country, baby. That's right. That's right. Father David, of course, in Canada. Yeah. Ooh, Canada. Yeah, and, buddy. Uh, Chi Town. In Chi Town, I assume. I assume he lives. He is. He's a Chicago Chi-Town. guy. Yeah. yeah, he's a Chicago. I mean, I knew it was, sure. you know, like he, he was at least from Chicago, but I, I think that he still lives in Chicago. So, all right, we've got uh, a few interesting topics to get to today. You guys want to jump into them? Let's get it going. Let's, let's roll, right. baby. So, we're going to start with this one. And Vince and I were asked something along these lines in the mailbag earlier this week. For starters, this is Notre Dame's 2024 football schedule now they're going to play Miami I have not seen a definite date for the Miami game okay the rest of the games I believe will go in this order at Texas A&M home against Northern Illinois at Purdue home against Miami Ohio home against Louisville home against Stanford at Georgia Tech home against Navy home against Florida State home against Virginia at USC and then of course again you have Miami. So that's the schedule. That's the list of opponents. <clears throat> not not quite the degree of difficulty of this year's schedule for sure. I guess kind of depending on what Florida State maybe turns into or even Miami. Right. But when you look at that schedule, would you roll the dice by starting either Steve Angeli, Ken, Kenny Menchie, or CJ Carr against them next year and kind of go development? Or would you rather pursue a transfer quarterback next year. What do you think? I think it's in everyone's best interest to not go to a transfer quarterback. I think looking at the schedule, yeah, it's not overly tough, but you know, it's hard to say what USC is going to look like without Caleb Williams. You know, he's definitely going to be gone uh, into the draft. So it's like they could dramatically kind of not dramatically, but at least not be, you know, where they're going to be last year and this season. Um, Texas A&M. It'll be the end of the season, though. It'll be the end of the season, so a lot can right. change, you know, by then, by the time Notre Dame sees. Go ahead. Texas A&M, I feel like, isn't going to continue to be bad with Jimbo Fisher. Like, I think that's going to be a quality game. And, you know, of course, it being the first game of the season at Texas A&M, I think that makes it um, a little bit tougher as well. So I think if, if Notre Dame is in the business of actually really developing a quarterback, I think it's a great opportunity uh, for someone like Kenny Menchie or C.J. Carr uh, to to develop, I, I don't see a, a real need to go to the transfer portal. Okay, I will partially agree with Jesse. Um, 
and I have some caveats to the whole thing. So Ooh, caveats. If, I love you. Know, <laughs> if there if there is a Sam Hartman caliber quarterback out there that wants to come to Notre Dame, you go get him. You can't just not and pretend that that person doesn't exist. Like you have to do what's best for your football team in the here and now. And if you've got a guy who's in the top 20 all time in passing touchdowns and yardage, you go get that guy. 100%. Agree. So that that that's that. So that's the caveat, right? If there if if the transfer portal quarterback class is just like a eh, then dry. I right, if it's dry and there's nobody there's no Sam Hartman type guy out there which that doesn't happen every year. I mean, let's be real honest on that 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 those guys aren't in the portal every year. So if that's not the case, if that guy doesn't exist, I'm still bringing one in. But I am not saying you're the starter. I'm saying you can compete because I just I want the depth. I want another depth piece. And I, I'm afraid not to, but it's a full on legitimate competition with everybody and may the best man win. Let me ask you this then, because I, because I agree completely on if you have a Sam Hartman type guy, you get him. There right. aren't many Sam Hartmans out there just because of the fact that by the time a guy gets to his fifth year and he's throwing 110 touchdowns in right. his career, you know, for a power five, he's just going to declare for the draft and, and you know, roll the dice and see what happens. But right. Sam Hartman, you know, unicorn opted to go a different direction. Yeah, absolutely. This year. What if the guy is Jack Cohn, you know, a Jack Cohn type background? Because similar uh sure. similar schedule notre dame played a couple right. of years ago with jack Cohn at mm -hmm. quarterback yep. they beat cincinnati they're in the college football playoff i don't Absolutely. know i don't know that they're in playoff contention if it's tyler buckner sure and you know drew pine at the helm that sure. year and you're gonna have the same level of experience essentially yep. with with any of these guys you know Assuming Hartman is healthy all year and all that kind of stuff, so you know, like healthy this year. So, right. So, what so if it's a Jack Cone type that, guy? Yeah. Do you bring that guy in? Hundred like, percent. Yes. He, he's a guy with you know a multiple. You know, he's a guy yeah, with. He's a, a, he's a starter. Experience. He's got experience. He's yeah. You know, thrown a pass uh, in college football. Uh, he's been a starter for a team. He's been in a Rose Bowl. Like yes, all of those credentials. Yes, you bring that guy in. I'm not promising him the starting position. I'm still, I still want a legitimate competition, but having that kind of background and having that kind of experience on your roster in no way can hurt you. That's the way I see it. And and I, I suppose the, the devil's advocate argument would be the only the way it would hurt you is now you're stunting the growth of, I guess, the guys that are on your roster, but the guy everybody thinks has the most upside is going to be a true freshman. Right. But you know, you look, at hand the just, off to? look at what just happened last year. And I, I didn't disagree with not bringing in a transfer. I know that there are some people who still thought that Notre Dame should have brought in a transfer last year. My argument all along is at some point you're going to have to start someone Absolutely. who doesn't have experience. So, you know, like just, just look at if you decide to bring in a, a transfer next year, and then you've still got Kenny Minchie and CJ Carr. You're just pushing it back one more year to 2025, where you're still going to be starting someone at that year with no experience. Right. You know, you're going to have to roll that guy out there absolutely at some point. The question does become though, like how much experience do either Angeli or Menchi end up with this year? You know, what it, what does that look like, and how how advanced is say you know cj Carr? it's it's not like no freshman has ever come in and been a starter sure right away even at notre dame for that matter yeah yeah exactly sure. exactly it could be done it could be done he just needs to prove that he can do it that i mean that's the biggest like it would be a legit competition i'm i know it's going to be hard to give four guys reps but that's what the spring's for and that's what summer's for and all of that and you see what cream rises to the top yeah, I think simply put, you just have you have it as an extra security blanket. You bring them in. Worst case scenario, your young guy is better, and then you have a depth piece. And worst case scenario, you have someone with the experience who can do it, and you allow your younger quarterbacks to grow a little bit more. Is the veteran going to hang around? I mean, uh, how happy is he going to be, I guess, if he ends up being beaten out by a younger well, guy? You I know? think you have to 
be upfront about that though. I mean, you can't, right. you can't promise him the ranch and then take it from him. I mean, you have to be like, look, you're going to, we're bringing you in to compete. And if you don't want to compete, then maybe this isn't the place for you. And you're not the quarterback we thought you were, you know, you, you have to bring him in to compete. I mean, that's, I would not promise anybody a starting no. position. And that's been the message all along that they've had, you know, these, right. these last few years, it's, you, you're not just, being handed a job when you come in, you're told you're going to compete for a job. And, you know, like the whole, you know, just look at the situation that we just had. It, you know, it sure. obviously ultimately ended up with a couple of other quarterbacks transferring. That's the chances you take, I guess. That, you know, and that is the chance because it's one thing to recruit and bring in high end talent and have a guy here or two transfer, sure. but it's another thing when you bring in someone from another program or experience mm-hmm. that leapfrog somebody on the depth chart. And then you have guys like that potentially leave. And it's, it's such a dicey situation it now is. just because of the, the instant eligibility with the transfer portal plus NIL, you got, you know, people talking in everybody's ears and all that stuff. I lean toward sticking with your own guys, but I, I do agree. If you find someone with a lot of experience, like who's you know had big game experience because it's a, you know, again, it's a, it's a schedule next year that sets it up. Like if you have the right oh, guy yeah. running things, yeah. especially with a 12 team playoff, like you, you know, you could even afford to lose a game and you'll probably be in a 12 team playoff next year. So. Yeah. That, and that's, that's the thing. It's like, would I feel comfortable with Steve or Kenny or CJ as the quarterback at Notre Dame against this schedule? If they win the competition, then yeah, I mean, I am comfortable with that, even though they would be a first-time starting quarterback because this schedule is not that daunting. Like, this schedule was a lot more daunting when they originally put Texas A&M on there, right? Yeah, Um, yeah. I mean, it was – I mean, Florida State hasn't been good for a little while, I guess. Uh, So, But they're they're up and coming. I think that's safe to say. I think Miami's up and coming. I think USC will take a step back. But there's no – I guess Florida State could become that, but there's no marquee game on this schedule, in my opinion. There's no – like, Florida State's going to end up being the night game at home. Okay, fine. Um, But other than that, like, who else would you want? I feel like that Texas A&M game is going to be pretty marquee because – Because it's the first game of the year. It's on the road. Yeah, and and both those rankings will be preseason. And, you know, whether or not they're true or not, it'll get built up to be something that's – a very premier game to start the season. I mean, Jimbo's on the hot seat. Can we all agree on that? Like, if no, yeah, that's why, I guess, team, I guess that's yeah. why I have more faith that he's going to kind of come up from his down right now. Cause I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see him trajecting down more, but it's going to be interesting. If he's not the coach anymore, now you're dealing with a first time head coach. And I mean, that, then it gets really well, interesting. You know, just like USC, you were talking about Florida state, Florida state will be losing Jordan Travis. So there'll be a question there. You know, there's going to be plenty of questions. You're right. There is no marquee game, but I, I wouldn't write Texas A&M off just because they, they haven't necessarily climbed to the top. They LSU won their division last year and Texas A&M snuck up and beat them at the end of the yeah. season. So there's, there's talent there. It's a matter of whether or not they're going to get it all put together. And as we were talking about on yesterday's show with the schedule, the sec schools are going to be playing starting next year when they add Oklahoma and Texas, man, it is going to be just brutal for those teams. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind giving a and a, a big fat L to start off the season. That'd be fun <laughs> for sure. No one's disagreeing with that. So a lot of current recruits, Notre Dame recruits, are taking photos in last year's Shamrock Series jerseys yeah. when they make their uh, visits here to Notre Dame. They're the white jerseys, of course, you know, the ones they wore in Vegas. White jerseys, gold numbers, the black trim. And they've worn them with the standard gold pants when we've seen them in these photos. My question is, do you buy or sell that uniform combination for Notre Dame's road games? going forward i'll let vince take this one he was oh. uh he was okay. trying to find these uh these photos so i know he's been analyzing over there there we go how's that hey. there you go so 
I wanted to. I wanted to get a. Vi I'm a very visual person, people. So I wanted to get a visual of this, and this that's is that's how course, Vince Carter. learns as well. You're not wrong. <laughs> so uh, this is Carter Nelson. He's the the tight end recruit uh, for Notre Dame, and this was on his Twitter account. So you know, all credit to him, I guess. Whatever. Um, but I wanted to get a visual. Here are my thoughts. This specific uniform, I think, needs to be tweaked. But okay. I love the white and the gold. I love it. And I love it with the gold pants. I think it's a great look. Um, I, I think that's something that they should explore as their away uniform. I, I Like I said, I think the I don't want it to be the Shamrock Series uniform. Like I want them to adjust a little bit. But other than that, I think this is a good look. I really do. It does not look bad. Go ahead, Jess. Everyone knows, or at least should know, that I am – some of my favorite uniforms that Notre Dame ever has done is when they played in the Shamrock Series against mm -hmm. Arizona State. White uniforms with all the white. green. Yeah. yeah, and then they had the accents with the gold, I'm pretty sure. I'm all aboard the white uniforms with, you know, <laughs> gold, splash of green, whatever it might be. But I agree with you, Vince. Like, I don't like the gold all around the shoulder pads. I think that's a little right. bit too much. Like, I like the idea of keeping it simple – but also keeping the same concept of using the gold more. And I also yes. like the idea brought up in the chat of, you know, maybe making the, the pants less mustery and a little bit more shiny as well to probably, you know, match that gold a little bit. I just think whatever that gold in the uniform should be kind of reflected in the pants as well. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. We've had a couple comments about the oh, pants yeah. over streaming. Those gold pants are disgusting. They always have been just do all white. I would not mind that either. But they do like the mustard. I've never understood how they ended up with mustard yeah. pants instead of you know, like those shiny pants like they wore. Remember with the throwbacks when they when they did the throwback to the '88 national championship team right. a couple of years back, they actually had gold pants. Why? And they look great. They get gold pants. Yeah, they look great. Go to those. What were you gonna say, Jess? I lost it. I don't mind these at all. I like them, but I, I agree. Like, get rid of the doilies or whatever up there <laughs> on the shoulders, the you know. Go Hold go on. a little bit more traditional. As I've said, though, before, you know, I, I, I could go with this, especially if they changed the pants to, you know, yeah. actual gold, which they need to do anyway for, for both home and away. I've said before, I wouldn't mind seeing white jerseys, green numbers. And, yes. you know, maybe, maybe they can just find, you know, because, like, their their current road white jerseys are just very plain looking. You They're know, there's not much long. to them. And it would be interesting to see them, you know, again, because they're not going to change the helmet. They're not going to change, you know, a lot of things about it. But why not maybe kind of mix it up a little bit when you go on the road? You know, maybe one week it's gold numbers. The next week it's green numbers. You know, something, something like that. I definitely like the green. I would like to see more green incorporated. But I could also, I'd be down with this. Maybe like especially, you know, like you uh, you make it green trim around the numbers instead yeah, sure. of the black sure. trim. You know, the uh, the like road, road unis need to be updated. Yes. Hands down, agree with that. For sure. I remember what I was going to say now. I hope they use the opportunity with the new apparel deal to explore opportunities because it is a good chance to make people come to the table with, you know, what are you going to do to kind of maybe, you know, spice it up a little bit. What right, you know, if you're gonna sign a new big contract deal, you want to probably maybe introduce you know something new to the team, the recruits, etc. Yeah. And I think it would be really cool if they incorporated that. And I think it's a big opportunity for them to do that. And it doesn't need to be like we're not asking for like you know uh, an Oregon slate of jerseys or anything, no, ridiculous just like, like that, just some minor touch ups here, something and there. new, something new, something to spice it up just a little bit, a little dash Change of color, there, never man. hurt anybody, yeah. you know, that kind of a thing. Completely agree. Because this is very, you know, again, if you take off the stuff off the shoulder pads, it's still a very traditional look. It's oh, just absolutely. that it happens to be gold numbers instead of blue numbers that they have. And it right. has Notre Dame at the top, which doesn't know they don't normally have true like, too. Yeah. You know, lettering. True. True. I like it though. I think it's a me too. It's a pretty surprisingly good look that I would not have thought was necessarily know, right? out there. Derek, he, I never know how serious Derek is, but he says he wants to see all black with gold numbers and helmet for Navy. <laughs> he no. started his Friday drinking early. I no, think all so. black. I don't no. think they're going black. I don't think they're. No. No. I don't think it's happening. 
With the Big Ten eliminating football divisions this season, which Jesse and I talked about yesterday, there's a good chance that we see a rematch of Michigan State versus Ohio State in back-to-back weeks at the end of the season when they play potentially in the Big Ten championship game. Do you buy or sell they should move the regular season game to earlier to avoid that possibility? Yeah, I'm a definite buy on this. I've said it even before this potential could happen. I don't like it at the end of the season because, to me, it's it's what the entire season rides up to for both of these teams, and it's the only game that proves Vince, Vince to be important right now. <laughs> and I know it's like of tradition and whatever, and it's never going to change. But I, to me, it just feels like everything always rides on that one game. And if you're going to have now this new you know, division or no longer of divisions, you're introducing, yeah, potential backup or uh, of matchups of the same teams back to back weeks. So I'm not saying move it like halfway to the season, but at least give it a, a week or two in between. First like, week into November. Something. First weekend in November instead of the last game of the regular season. Like what's what's wrong with that? Come on, Vince. Come on, Vince. What's Let's wrong go. with that? There's a lot wrong with it. <laughs> A lot wrong like, with it Look, that, because that's that's the way they've always done it. So they yes. keep doing it. Yes, I sit in the same seat every classroom I go into. I do the same thing all the times because I've always done it. And that's the only reason that I need. <laughs> and college football is about tradition. Styers is all right. They're still it's gonna about play. tradition. They're no, still but that's play where they other. play. It's the last game. It's the what's important. Well, I tell you what. You sound like Larry 30, David. Right Thirty now. years ago, they weren't playing a Big Ten championship game. So, like, they've they already still broken be. tradition by adding a Big Ten championship game. So, And if they're not going to have divisions anymore, then they shouldn't be playing a Big Ten championship game. So there you All go. that matters is they're going to play. Why would you want to see them play in back-to-back weeks? Because you know that that's who it's going to end up being more times than not. Like it's, Probably like, true. The, in the next the five rocker. years, in the next five years, because of the fact that they're doing away with divisions and you're going to get one versus two every year rather than – you know, Ohio State versus Iowa or Minnesota or whoever it happens to be or Michigan against one of those teams, more likely than not, we're going to see this matchup multiple times, at least in the next five years, if, Agreed. you know, if not beyond that. So why would you want to see that two weeks in a row? It makes it less special if you see it two weeks in a row. Just push Doesn't, it up to the first weekend in November. Oh. Still a repeat, still a repeat game. I don't, I don't care when it is. Yeah, but you're going to see other repeats, you know, as well. You're going to see a bunch of repeats. You you're probably going to see, you know. Why would you want to see it back to back weeks, though? I, no I want We've to see it as much as it. possible. That's <laughs> that's right. It's it's the last game of the regular season. It's what it all Jesse, leads up to. You've known Vince for a long time. Obviously, I've known Vince for a long time. <laughs> when did Vince turn eighty? Honest. Like when uh, I think when his, did this his child happen? going through high school has put more oh. years on him recently. I just yes. It, it introduces I, I more places before. he has to be. I swear working in the public school system has done something to Vince <laughs> that we could never have anticipated. Like I was going through our whole timeline of knowing each other <laughs> earlier in the week, you know, and I didn't mention by the way, at this point, Vince bifurcates and he goes down the, you know, education road and it makes, you know, the career of being a high school teacher and I guess intermediate school teacher as well and, and coach. Yeah. I just feel like it has aged you, Vince. It has jaded you. It has turned you into something. You used to be such a rose-colored glasses, full of life, your heart full, you know, clear eyes, full heart, can't lose kind of guy, oh, and you've turned into something else. Uh, now I'm the get-off-your-long guy, all right? That's <laughs> what it is. And uh, I hate Michigan and I hate Ohio State, but I still want them to be the last game of the season. All right. Vince, you know what I was thinking about? What's Next that? year is my 10-year high school anniversary, oh and so my, our freshman year was like 14 years ago, obviously, 13, 14 years ago, freshman football. My favorite memory, Drory hitting you in the back of the head with that football. <laughs> that was <laughs> Just thinking about I mean, it. Vince's of course, my arm being is, ripped open. I was going to so, say, yes, Vince's favorite memory is, is Jory ripping your arm open with a so, tackle dummy. <laughs> so happy that wasn't me. So happy that wasn't me because I didn't want to have to tell your dad that I did that to you. I was so happy that wasn't me. 
or just allowed, uh, or probably just allowed me Mr. to look Amato at Jory. Either, right? I guess it was before I even knew Jory. So yeah, like it I, was. <laughs> I was say allowed me to look at him. What, what do you think would have been worse time. though, Mr. Amato or my dad? What's that? Both were bad, right? Having to tell Coach Amato or. Well, I got I got sued with Coach Amato, and that that conversation didn't go over very well either. So I think inj- injuring a player was probably better than getting sued. So yeah, <laughs> that too. <laughs> Had some good conversations with Coach Amato, that's for sure. I bet you did. Sam says he's a high school teacher and coach mm-hmm. as well. So I don't know if you're as jaded as as Vince is, Sam. But his father <laughs> Sam. David said, "What I'm teaching everyone is that." Uh, Teaching in uh, it teaching does jade you, and then moving school, into the moving the into the dean's yeah. office has certainly uh, escalated. can't do anything for you. Yeah, that has escalated my uh, my. This used to be for the students. That. Now he's against the students. I'm gonna say because now you just see all the idiots that are doing the stupid yep. stuff that makes you even more ticked off. Get yes, off my I was lawn. At, <laughs> I was at graduation, you know, a couple of weeks ago. I didn't know any of those kids, especially the ones that had cords. And like all the honors, I don't know any of those kids. I, I, it was a bunch of strangers. Just the bad That's ones. Right. <laughs> all right, so NFL training camps open in a little bit more than a month. But HBO still has not named this year's Hard Knocks team. The team that's going to be featured on Hard Knocks, you know, training camp with the, yeah. like last year it was the Detroit Lions. So these are the requirements for a team to not be featured on the show teams with a new head coach teams that have been in the playoffs in the past two seasons and teams that have already been on hard knocks within the last 10 years. So that leaves four available teams that do not fit any of those criteria. And of course a team can volunteer. Like even if they fall into one of those criteria, you know, like they could still volunteer to be on the show if they wanted to, but no one has volunteered and there are four (laughs) teams that uh, they have a choice if they get picked they don't have a choice right it's it's well if you get picked someone's got to do it at some point so these are the four teams like if no one else is going to volunteer for it which they haven't at this point these are the four teams that it's looks like it's going to come down to your chicago bears the new orleans saints the washington commanders and the new york jets 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 so who should be this year's hard knocks team Go ahead, Jesse. Let's see if you get this one right. No, you're <laughs> going to pick the answer. Uh, right off the bat, I remove the commanders. Um, don't have any interest in them. They suck. They're going to continue to Good suck. Job. Good um, job. The Saints, I have no interest in. They're just still kind of rebuilding. Not a lot of whole, answer. Not a lot of talent there, really. And then, yeah, it's down to the Bears or Jets. I'm not a Bears fan, so I'm not going to go with the Bears. I'm more interested <laughs> in what the Jets go going on with. Uh, I like Coach Robert Sala, and I like that the defense that he runs and how good it is. So I think that would be interesting. I think seeing Aaron Rodgers up close and personal uh, in his first season there, and and seeing you know what he's still got in the tank, and maybe even seeing a side of Aaron Rodgers that I would enjoy uh, oh, more. So mm, I'd be, be curious hard. to see. I'd be curious mm. to see how much he would want to participate in that because see, they typically, see. you know, they typically focus on younger rookies trying to make the team as yeah. opposed to the superstars. So it's the Jets. That's the right answer, first of all. It's the Jets, because how do you not have Aaron Idiot Rodgers on there doing his thing? And the more you're going to – the more they put a camera in his face and let him talk, the more he's going to piss everybody off is what's going to happen <laughs> because yeah. he's a looney tune, okay? Why well, just – the potential I'm here for the Jets this season too. Like I think they're they had they're right on that brink, and so it's like the story to me would be like, can Aaron Rodgers propel them into the playoffs? Of course, that's the story, and it's going to be hilarious when he doesn't. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but you put a you put a camera in his face unabated, like he is going to say some crazy stuff, and there's going to be rapid fire questions coming that are going. Aaron Rodgers said this on Hard Knocks, and everybody, we're all going to roll our eyes, then we're going to talk about it. I mean, it's guaranteed fodder for for rapid fire, Sean. So you want the Jets, baby. I mean, I do, if Aaron Rodgers is participating. But again, it's like a lot of times they just, 
you know, they steer clear because they, they, they can always get the young guys trying to make the roster because those guys want the publicity and the attention. Oh, for sure. You know, that's, and they're that's on every always, team. always, I mean. yeah, like, but, you know, like the stuff you're saying, like they did the Raiders a few years back and that was Antonio Brown when he ended up, you know, oh. when he did the whole thing. Remember he like stayed in the, what was that? The, the, that, ch that chamber, the cold chamber too long. And he, he oh, messed up his that. feet and all that stuff. And he ended up, you know, so like two or three episodes focused on him. And then the next thing you know, he was cut and he was, he was gone, but it was just a nut show with Antonio Brown for a little bit. And then it was like all of a sudden it, it didn't last very long. Aaron, you know, again, like none of these, the way they set that show up, it's like none of the veterans have to participate. I don't think if, if they don't want to. So like, if you could focus it on Aaron Rodgers, it would obviously make a lot of sense. How big is Aaron Rodgers ego? I mean, Oh, we know it's pretty big. So I think that there's maybe a good chance that they could suck him in. I think the bears just need to bite the bullet. I saw that McCaskey was like, Oh, we don't want to do it. We want to focus on football, blah, blah, blah. It's 2023. Like you can't handle a few cameras being around, you know, like you, you talk about up and coming team and all that kind of stuff. You've got Justin Fields or the Chicago bears. You're in a major media market. All that, you know, there's there's not a lot beyond Justin Fields on the team. I don't know how exciting Matt Eberflus would be, but, it, you know, like just because the Bears say they don't want to do it doesn't mean that they should get out of it. They've never had to do it before. They've been doing this thing for more than 20 years now. Make the Bears do it. I think the Bears would be like the Lions just did it last year. Sure. Well, and the Bears have a very young team anyway. And so, I mean, that would be – a very it would be interesting like from a football standpoint the bears would be the most interesting from a drama standpoint you go with the jets so depending on how you're looking at this as an executive right i mean you want eyeballs and what eyeballs you're going to get the most eyeballs if you have aaron Rodgers, right i think the, the most interesting football documentary would be with the bears personally i agree i agree but we all think it should be the Jets, basically, right? <laughs> right. Like Jets win for me. I don't think it, there's me any too. Disagree. I mean, I absolutely. All right. So Pat Sajak announced this week that he's going to retire as host of Wheel of Fortune. My question to you guys: What sports figure would you want to see take his place at host? Remember, like Aaron Rodgers when uh, Jeopardy. Um, yeah, Jeopardy, the, the whole Jeopardy thing a couple years ago. He he was guest host for a little while. Are there any sports figures that you'd like to see take over the wheel for Pat Sajak? I'm shocked that Vanna White's not leaving with him. Is she going to stay on with the new guy? Like, what's up with that? I thought she was, but maybe she's not. Crazy. I don't know. I mean, that's crazy. She should have just – that needs to just be a whole new regime of Wheel of Fortune. You know what I mean? But uh, to the question, Sean Stiers, uh, I, I'm going to go with somebody that's near and dear to your heart, Troy Aikman. Oh, interesting. He'll never do it. He's making enough money to call in games. But uh, yeah. I think he'd be interesting. I think he'd be good. I think he would. I think he would as well. He would be an interesting one. I actually had a different one. I'll see what Jesse goes with before I reveal mine. I would go with Ernie Johnson from the TNT. Ernie uh, Johnson? Yeah. <laughs> what? Dude, I'm laughing at Sean's response, his reaction to Ernie Johnson. Either that basketball. or Charles Barkley would be my answer. Barkley, I think, would be good. I would actually go – now, you brought up a good point with, with Aikman. I would go with Romo because, like uh, – He's my second like, choice. Romo's kind of, you know, like the – you know, he's, he's going to have some, you know, little – little quips and he's going to have some, you know, probably get some funny lines and stuff like in there. I, I think that let Jason Garrett, do it. that's hilarious. I mean, <laughs> Mr. Personality, I, I think, you know, like Romo's young enough. He's got a lot of personality, but the point you made with the money with Aikman, it's the same with Romo. Thing, Both of those yeah. guys are getting so much, but it's, it's also very easy money. You know, it's like, oh. I think they, I think they record like on, you know, like, like 20 or 30 days out of the year or something like that. They do all the episodes for the entire, Sign you know, up. like, so like, Oh, that's so smart. I know. So, so like, you know, they're half hour shows. They, I mean, boom, boom, yeah. boom, man. Yeah. Knock them out. That's right. 
Yeah, do you so, think that they like think, space it out by what suit that they're wearing, or do you think they have them go change just after like no, every game, put on a new suit every they single change. episode? They change because the contestants are told to bring like Jeopardy contestants. They're told to bring multiple changes, changes of, clothes of clothes because they just yeah. film a bunch in a mm. row. All right. So interestingly, <laughs> fill in the blank. Ryan Seacrest <laughs> is the reported front runner for Sajax to be the replacement. It would be blank if Seacrest gets the job. It would be boring. Like the, it's like that's like the most I feel like obvious answer. You know, you take another network star or whatever guy that does a lot of hosting in general. Like I was it was funny. I was driving to go golf a couple weekends ago and America's top 40 or whatever, the countdown, he still hosts that. And I was like, I remember listening to this when I was in like middle school, high school and I was like, man, that's he still does that. And then the, he, I just feel like it's there's enough of Ryan Seacrest already. And I feel like that it, it's it would be overkill. Yes. And why not get someone who's just, you know, it, just spice it up, do something kind of maybe out of the box more, someone with a bit more kind of, you know, newer personality or personality that we're not accustomed to as much. It would be terrible. It would be, it, <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. It's too much Ryan Seacrest. I'm not a huge Ryan Seacrest fan anyway. Like, I don't know. I don't understand what the likability factor for Ryan Seacrest is. And he's got his hand in, like, feels like everything. I know. And I just, it's just too much. It's too much for me. I don't like it. Find somebody else. There's, there's a million other people. I think literally a million other people that could do that job and it not be Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. It would be cliche at this point if, if yes. Seacrest got it because of all the, you know, that you guys are saying. It's like, you know, really, you're just going to put Seacrest in a, another job like that right. because of everything else between. Uh, but like, look at, look at like where, like nobody knew who Seacrest was, what, 20, however many years ago when American Idol started. And now he's like right. America's host. Like, you know, again, like, why do you need him doing another show like this when he's already doing Idol and he's doing the the radio thing that he does and he's been doing the you know the the show with um, uh, Kelly Kelly you know? Ripa they, yeah he's not live on that was live yeah well yeah but he but he was you it know, was like, for a long time I he like he like somehow and I don't know what happened I don't know if he stalked him or whatever but like somehow he got on the coattails of Dick Clark. And just rode that puppy even after he passed away. He's just he's just riding Dick Clark's, you know, fanfare <laughs> right Man. into stardom. It's nuts. Jim, Jim wants Rick Flair. That would be that would be fun Woo! for a little while anyway. Rick Rick's getting up there a little bit though. <laughs> but we don't need Seacrest. There, as you said, there are literally a million other people, but it just feels like they obviously want some, you know, if like he really is the guy that they want, they want this name recognition and they're just going to put another guy in there you know they should really just flip Brutal. the script and find you know find a female to be the host and have some dude over there being the dolt who's you know flipping the flipping okay. the letters over speaking, there speaking speaking of which have you watched price is right like in the last five years or so and they've got Not like a, you know maybe once or twice they've got like a male model you know okay or two i don't know how many they've got whatever it's not like something i watch every day but he looks so awkward you know here's the car you know or what you know it's so awkward like that is not a job for a guy i'm sorry that's gonna be me and my get off my lawn thing again but uh it, it doesn't work and i don't know that it would work at uh for wheel of fortune either i've been watching the prices right at night there's a new Price is Right at Night. That's a new awesome. one. Yeah, yeah it's on Drew Wednesdays. Drew that one as well. Yeah, it's Drew Carey on Wednesdays. It's only on Wednesdays. It's huh. interesting to watch. It's like a... We got that like guy a, that's like trying to be a model. Like, it's not good. I don't know. I just know it's like the it's like the super fan edition. So, and it's a much like smaller crowd. So it's... Uh, oh, interesting. It's pretty fun. Yeah. All right. Price is Right at Night on Wednesday night. All right. Get you plug and play Price is Right. So Leonard Fournette. Oh, someone also said, "Hi, sorry." Before we go in, Steve Harvey is probably my favorite game show host. He is the funniest guy. He's I love hilarious. Family Feud. Yeah, you're I big on you Family that. Feud. You're big on Family Feud. That's true. Steve Harvey's hilarious. I think. I think at Christmas when you were here, we watched a few Family <laughs> Feuds because I mean, the problem if with you're family scrolling feud, by it, it's hard to say no. 
The problem with Family Feud is you can't watch it in front of your family anymore. <laughs> That's the problem it's with Family raunchy. Feud. It is a little it's, racier. Like it is super racy. Like I had it on the other day, and I was like, I got to turn this off. Like my <laughs> my eight year old starts asking me questions. I'm like, I can't watch this. I can't watch Family Feud with my family. <laughs> Well, it's not like back in the day when Richard Dawson was sticking his tongue down his throat. <laughs> at least you know, the right? questions were a little less, you know, <laughs> racy. <laughs> but you're right. Richard Dawson took, took advantage. <laughs> he did. All right. So Leonard Fournette's been guest hosting on Good Morning Football on NFL Network this week. He revealed today he has tattoos on each of his calves, one of Robert De Niro and the other of Chaz Palmateri. From the movie A Bronx Tale. So if you had to get a tattoo of a celebrity or athlete, who would it be? No, first of all, I didn't know who this Chaz Palminteri, Palminteri. person was. But I'll take the reign or the lead on this okay. one. I'm gonna, do. I think it would be great. It'd be easy. My favorite player um, of all time. Just a nice David Ortiz in his backswing, follow through, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Put that bad boy right on my calf. Oh, that's the swing man. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like like similar to how Ken Griffey is, you know, in the swing man oh, logo, he, but but with David Ortiz's sweet. swing. And that's what I would put on my calf if I had to. Nice. This this one was I tough. had a feeling that might be it, but I, I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> sure if you if you'd go cowboy or David Ortiz. No, I, so. I feel like those are just a little bit more like in, in baseball, it's such like a, a guy can be more dominant of like taking over. I feel like football, it's just like I feel like it's just a little bit weird. Like if I had Romo on there or like Troy Aikman on there or Jason Witten on there, just, I don't know. And then like the swing part, I think makes it actually looks a, a little bit more natural. You know, yeah. it doesn't stick out. I thought yeah. long and hard about this one. I'm sure you tell. did. I'm sure you did. <laughs> this one's really hard because I would never get a tattoo ever. <laughs> uh, so this one's really hard for me. And like, especially of a, person's like another person's face like that would be that would be very difficult but in the in the uh the fun part of the question so in the in the let's see here so how about uh i was i was watching <laughs> back of my neck I'm jeff samarja was up there neck. for me uh samarja <laughs> okay all right i you know i i'm going I'm the shocked. movie route i'm going to move okay. i'm going the movie route and i'll go with uh I was watching the uh, the mailbag earlier, okay, and this movie came up, and so that's why I'm going with it. I'm putting Marty McFly on one, and I'm putting <laughs> Doc Mc, Doc Brown on the other. Nice, <laughs> nice. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little two for action. Now, any 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 special connection? To, to Back to the Future, Marty McFly, like what? what? For, me, for me, I just love those movies. I I, I love I I love I love those movies. I thought long and hard about this as well, and you know, like I came up with a question. It was tough. I I think that I would I you know Pulp Fiction is one of my favorite movies of all time, and I thought about getting Samuel Jackson when you know he's in the guy's apartment. And, you know, he, you know, he asks for a, a bite of the big kahuna burger and then he takes a drink of the Sprite to wash it down where he's like sucking on the straw. You get that. <laughs> That's right. Ah. So I think I'd go Samuel L. Jackson for mine. Nice. <laughs> I like that. I do the one of him holding out the like the what he's holding out the gun in the apartment. That's what mine would be. If I ah, That's Samuel a good L. one. Too. That's a good one, too. Yeah. You don't want him dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so i finished watching ted lasso last night and no spoilers do ted I, lasso. Do I have to check out for a couple minutes no, this, vince still doesn't have apple right now jesse no. where are you have you i finished watched? so the show i've i've so yeah i so i finished like the final one again this is no spoilers i'm not going to review the episode or anything like that okay Whew. i said like early, like the first, probably more than half of the season, I felt like they just went all over the place with the storylines and stuff like that. They really like kind of got off topic a little bit. You know, okay. people like to say filler episodes and stuff like that. I really felt like the last three or four episodes, they got back on track. It was more, 
you know, like they they sort of narrowed down the storylines. It was more team focused, you know, like the main okay. characters on the team and stuff like that. And some people didn't like the ending. I thought it was a I thought it was a pretty good, you know, again, I'm not gonna spoil this how the it series ended ending, like right? I mean, yeah. it's not officially yeah, but, the end, but it's the end, right? I mean, they haven't right. come right out and said it, but they've exactly. talked about it being a three a three year thing, right? Exactly. Chris, okay. I've said multiple times, no spoilers. I'm not going to, we're not talking anything about specific about the episode. I'm just talking about the way things like things got back on track. I felt like at the okay. end and I felt like it was a pretty, pretty solid ending the season as a whole. I did not like again, because like, you know, they expanded these episodes to, to pretty close to an hour and they just had so many just d discongruent storylines going on that were just really uninteresting. Mm -hmm. You know, they went to the Netherlands for an episode that I thought was just like they completely went off the rails, you know, as, as Chris says there. But again, like last three episodes, I thought were, were pretty solid. Would you agree with that, Jess? I would agree that the ending was good. I, I don't think I would agree with uh, your assessment of the episodes before those as well. I so you I were think, in. I, yeah, I think that and those I'm, episodes I, now, help tie the end together. You're, I mean, opinion. you're not alone. I, I felt like they could have whittled down some of those storylines and still got the final result you know, at the end with what you're talking about, with how things tied up. Well, I mean, together. I love to write and talk and run on and not very good at being condensed with words. So maybe that's why I enjoyed <laughs> it so much is there you go. because it felt like, you know, to me, I enjoyed that kind of character development. And I mean, you're not alone because Naomi would watch a lot with me and she just became so disinterested in this last season that she didn't I really, really want to finish. I really struggled to get through like, the early and middle parts of the I season. I thought the, the the very beginning was like, wow, like this is really slowed down and I don't really necessarily care. And then it kind of, the, the it sped up definitely. And the it, it got to the, the the point of inflection was at the very end. Yeah. Um, so you were going up the roller coaster from the season, you know, to the start. And then season end is like you go off the cliff of the roller coaster essentially. So I got a really little, enjoyed. I got it. a little misty eyed. I got a little misty eyed in the final. There's, I, you know, a lot of Ted happened. Lasso episodes so. make me misty eyed. I don't know yeah, why. Me too. But this was the only one this season. You know, definitely like first couple of season, first season especially, second <laughs> season maybe. You know, a little bit. You know, like the Christmas episode in season two was like, eh, do we really need that? And then, um, but this season, you know, again, last three. I would rate a lot higher. Now so, it's pretty polarizing. Not everybody feels like me. You know, some people, you know, it's it's been polarizing. Like other, there, there are plenty of people like Jesse who say it was a great season and whatever. It felt just, like the the whole you needed that in the beginning. It's like a full art flow that got you to the the end of the season. Okay. So are you two? It's kind of a yes or a no, I guess. Are you two happy with where they've left the series? Yes. Like, do you need more closure on anything? No. No, okay. I mean there are they did leave the door open for, you know for some spin-off possibilities. Okay. There's gotcha. like two or three potential spin-offs they could go with, with gotcha. how things ended. But like the so. the Ted Lasso world, you feel like it's a good cut off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. For sure. All right, good to know. <laughs> so I don't like Nothing I don't worse like than when committing I to, to a show it. and then it ends bad and you're like i feel like i just wasted yeah a good exactly. chunk of my time because this ended bad and i and i need i need to know what the ending is like i don't like things being left open like the like for example the end of like castaway with tom hanks <laughs> right where they like he's literally at the crossroads of like his life and you don't know which direction he went yeah i hate that too just that, give no. me a little indication of maybe which way that yeah. he started to go I paid good money to be told what happens at the end of this movie. I don't need to make it up on my own. I don't. Yeah, like I, right. yeah. I'm in the same way. It's it's cut and yeah. dry. Just give me the answer. There's yeah. I Tell me what happens. To, I don't. I come to a movie to be entertained, not yes. think right. about possibilities. Don't leave it open to my interpretation. Just interpret right. it for me. Give then me the I leave actually more stressed because now I got to think about <laughs> yes. what potentially could have happened. Exactly. I, I'm okay with being upset with the decision that they made, but make it for me. I don't need to yeah. be making the decision. Oh, Joe, says, you bring AKA up Sopranos or Lost. And lost. I, didn't, I never watched Sopranos. Lost. 
you know, uh, one of the more controversial series endings ever. And there's still, you know, a lot of debate on what exactly it meant at the end and all that different kind of stuff. I'll say this, uh, you know, like Jesse and I used to watch that every week together, watched it all the way through. I I've rewatched always, it. I have too. And I, that's what I was getting ready to say. I'd never watched the final episode a second time until I did the complete rewatch of the series a couple of years ago. And I still, I came away with that feeling a little bit better the second time through. So that show, there's a lot going on. You got to really a lot pay attention. On. There is a lot going on. <laughs> I might I rewatch more, it a I third think, time think, because I'll probably I, pick up on stuff that I didn't pick up on the last time. I think what upsets people the most about that, you know, that particular series is like, there were all these different mysteries and, you know, like things like that, that they never kind of wrapped up and that ticked people off because they spent so much time on, on those. Vince is sitting there going, what? So I heard a story recently about a woman who'd been asked to be a bridesmaid in someone's wedding that she's really, you know, she's really not that close to the person, but she's asked, she's supposed to be a bridesmaid in her wedding anyway. She wants to get out of being in the wedding. So have you or someone that you know ever committed to being in a wedding and then ditched out on it? Jess, you're kind of in the wedding season of your life right now. So true. I will let you answer this one first and see where you're going to go with this one. Hmm. No, the answer I've never and I've never known someone to. Um, but I've relatively gotten introduced to it. So like, I've, it's not like I'm, I'm like, yes, I'm in that early stage of like starting to like, we actually have one coming up next week. And then I have another one in hey, Michigan, right like there. three weeks after that. So like, I'm, I'm getting into it, right? You're in the thick of it. Yeah. Um, I think what would be more interesting is what would be, you know, your go-to excuse to get out of it. <laughs> And I feel like Vince would have something good for that. Oh, I've got like 17 jobs. Like that, <laughs> the excuses right. are built in, man. Like that's <laughs> that's easy. And I, I've turned down being in weddings before. Have um, you really? Yeah. Yeah. I Not a lot. Like I can think of one off the top of my head. Um, and I think there was, was a it just someone that, someone that you just okay. conflict, but also okay. like now i have a legitimate schedule conflict situation mm -hmm. um but you know i i if if somebody's not that close to me and they're asking me to be in a wedding i'm probably gonna say yeah i just don't know if i can even make it man like i see what the, the way this the way this story was told the person who was asked to be in the wedding like this group of people that she knows feel that they're closer to her than she really is to them. They're in school Ooh. together and that kind of thing. So that's and tough. So, that's tough. Yeah. Right there. So like they think that she's basically, they think that she's a good friend and she's just like, ah, I'm, I'm really not that. And she should have said yeah. no from the get go. <laughs> right. I, once you say yes, you're in, you can't that's all on you at that point. Yeah. You open the flood. Gate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't, you back can't out go at back point. at that point. No. No, you've yeah. got to make that excuse up early. And it's a one-way not... valve. Once yeah. you go through, there's no coming back. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. I do. I personally know I've I've never ditched out. I've been in a couple, but, you know, that, that's been a few years ago, you know, because like <laughs> Vince said, it's like Jesse is more in that demographic right now. But there was, you know, like a, a friend group. It was actually right when I was getting out of the Army and – one, you know, one guy was getting married and he asked one of our other friends to be his groomsman. And it, the guy said, yes, had the tux ordered the whole thing. Ooh. And then the guy just, because we, you know, lived in, in different cities, he just didn't show up. I'm like, oh. dude, dude, are you like going to the wedding or what? He's like, nope. I'm like, what? Wow. And it just, I, and it was, you know, it was easier to ghost people, obviously, back then because you didn't have cell phones and Facebook and, you know, all the, the other stuff. He That's just rough. didn't show up. That's didn't rough. Show up. I, I, I will say I did not go to one of my really good friends' weddings um, fairly recently, within the last, like, five years. Uh, and it was a destination wedding. And this, this Joe says he's doing a destination wedding. He's trying to figure out who to ask, and it's not easy. And uh, he wanted me to officiate his wedding. Uh, but it was in a it was a destination wedding. 
we couldn't afford it, man. Like there was just no way we were going to be able to say, are they, are they going to pay for you to, they were going to pay for me to officiate it. They were going to pay for me, but not my wife. And even that, I mean, we're talking lots of money to be honest with you. And just that wasn't in the cards, you know? And so I had to gracefully bow out, even though I really did want to go, I've always wanted to officiate a wedding, but my, (laughs) my wife, was like, oh, you just want it to all be about you. <laughs> that, that was what she said to me. But I, I think that would have been a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, now, that was it was just too expensive. Now, are you are you like, do you have some certification no. to officiate a wedding? No, like, I would have had to this... get that, you know, like okay. some church of the internet or something like that. Like it's right. it's not difficult to get some sort of a license to officiate a wedding. I did find that part out. Okay. Um, I, I really wanted to do it too, but you know, say la vie, life of being a teacher. Interesting. That was that was right. pre Irish breakdown. If we Irish breakdown was around, I might have been able to squirrel away a little money. I don't know. That's right. All right. Well, that's gonna do it. I, I, that, I thought maybe we'd get some uh, crazy wedding stories, but I guess not. But I honestly, I try to go to the least amount of weddings possible. I'm not a fan yeah. of weddings. Um. You know, like my wife, like if you know, if we know someone, well, I know Vince you know, like someone's invited. getting married, and you're different. I would go to yours. <laughs> I would go to the your... last one. Uh, the last one I went to was actually someone Jesse used to play baseball with. They got mm. married a few years ago, and they were divorced within like three months. Oh, wow! They were pretty young. They were pretty young, and you know, like small town, and you know. Basically, wow. the uh, the bride decided I'm not this that into this after all, and I want to do <laughs> other things. And now wow. they're both remarried already. Wow, it hasn't even been that long. Yeah, my so you you're talking about how old I am basically by saying your 10 year anniversary or your uh, you know from graduation and all of that. Jess, my last wedding was Frankie's. Uh, oh, nice oh, quarterback wow. of, the, of the high school football team. He's my first quarterback that I coached. And it was like a reunion of the football team. (laughs) Like that's what it was basically. And it was a lot of fun. Like that was, that was a lot of fun seeing all those guys grown up. And um, the sad part was I was their age when I was coaching them. Like that's how it all went full circle. And it made me feel incredibly old. Weddings are a lot more fun when you're, you know, like in your twenties, like going to weddings, like in your twenties and you're single. Like yes, if, you, if you're already absolutely. married or, you know, you, you, you're, you're going with girl, it's, it's a lot different when you're single and you're going to somebody else's wedding. Then. So I'll tell you what, it's very interesting that Jesse's giving me a hard time about going to his wedding when he hasn't even popped the question last time I checked. <laughs> oh, have you been I guess we got to end mother? on that. <laughs> 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 and on that note. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will wrap it up. That wraps up the week glad you could be here today glad that you uh joined us good to see you guys vince good luck to uh dylan's team this weekend yeah. down there in cincinnati oh by the way i forgot we had this we had this question decaf asked earlier are you eating skyline chili for dinner tonight? i was told skyline over gold star so it might have to happen uh at some point while we're down here we we're I actually like the, going to get dinner so i like the uh like the they're they're basically mini mini dogs chili dogs, okay. they come with like cheese and on, you know you can get cheese and onion on top and all that oh, kind okay. of stuff. You'll need about ten of them probably. They go down <laughs> fast, but <laughs> you know me. That's right. Yeah, they're not big. They're literally they're okay. You know, it's like yeah, we got them. I think the last time we went to a Reds game, they had nice. concessions. I'm there. hoping that Dylan makes it out of pool play because the Reds come back into town on Monday. Okay. So if they win, it's the Rockies, I think Chris Bryant and the Rockies. So I'm all about it. Why don't you all focus right. on the team that's won four in a row? <laughs> I would, but they're not here. I wish they were playing the Reds. Anyway, hit that like button on your way out. We appreciate you. We will talk to you Monday. Ivy Nation Sports Talk.